We know more about the moon than about our oceans. Yet, today we know more than ever before, and now we have learned that life comes from the sea. And that without blue, there is no green. Our generation is the first one suffering directly the consequences of climate change caused by human actions an extinction of a species. And it will be the last generation that can do something about it before it's too late. My name is Belen Garcia and I come originally from Spain and I am a marine biologist and I work here in Iceland at the moment. So when I was a kid, I think I always loved the ocean and uh, it has been always my passion. I just really knew that, okay, that's, that's gonna be my future. You know, I'm just gonna work in the ocean somehow. So I started guiding and it's a very nice job because you have the opportunity to teach all these people about what you feel about the ocean and how important the oceans are. There you go. There you go. These are the baleen plates, okay? Imagine, many like this. And hanging from here. And I think education is absolutely important. First, number one thing important when it, when it comes to to making a change because you need people involved, you need people to understand why we need to protect this. It can be very intense here, and it is very intense, especially you now in the summer. Then it's like always tours, always like people coming, and if you want to work, there is always work. It's a job that demands a lot because like the fact that you are working in front of people and you have to pretend that everything is super amazing, which it is. I mean, you always like bring your bright side, you know, like to the people because of course there is always a bright side, but, but then you feel really tired, you know, after like, oh man.
Hmm, not good. I found a tent. Viking Sumar Hall. There's trust even in the most remote areas in Iceland. It's crazy. Look at this. I mean, somebody had the brilliant idea to use this as a trust bin. And uh, that's the thing, you know, we just take from nature, but we very seldom we just give back or just be fair with, with nature in general. This will last here forever. I mean, this is never degradating, like plastic never degradates. That's the problem. It, it's just like breaking down into smaller pieces, into microplastics. I just feel that humans, we are just a one other species and we are just should be in harmony with the nature. We cannot just pretend to be here dominating everything and, and feeling like on top of things and, and not caring and, and just feel okay, you know, and I just could not accept that. Like, I can't, I can't not, like, I just feel shit, you know. And then I realized that actually you can never change uh, the world, but you have to change yourself. Okay, where am I now? What did I achieve and what can I do with that? And there it came. So then I thought, okay, my team, who is going to be the team? <laughs> my name is uh, Heimir Hardorsson, born and raised here in North, Northeast Iceland. Well, I'm uh, taking care of the shipyard and the maintenance of the boats and uh, being a captain on expeditions and, uh, and day trips also. outdoors, being at a beautiful harbour, preparing a boat for a trip with the birds singing around, you know, who knows what is waiting out there. somehow a fascinating idea to be working with the ocean in that way. The thing that attracted me from him since the very first minute was when I saw his face when, when we were both sailing in Opal. We were working and, and then I saw his face of excitement and happiness looking all around with like super happy eyes and just saying we're sailing <laughs> and then I was like wow look at your face you're so happy and suddenly I was like the same happy and, and I could just really realize and that, that feeling is like amazing and then I thought wow there is somebody else that feels the same really like so much connection out there My name is Charlotte, and I work for the University of Iceland studying whales. I 
I supervise an internship program. So there's students coming from all over Europe and they come here to get experience on different techniques of whale research. There's a possibility that we're going to see a humpback today. So the speedboat saw it. So we'll see where it is, hopefully. The students usually give them a nickname when they're being added to the catalog and then at the end of the year they get an official number as well. So for the humpbacks, like when they dive and they lift the tail, then it, they have a pattern on the underneath side and it's unique to everyone. So some of them are like very unique and you just remember, so that is pretty cool. like the blue whales here too, like they're so huge. But then it just disappears. And you're like, how is it possible? Like it's like 30 meters long. Where did it go? Like, where? It's crazy, right? It's amazing, yeah. Yeah. Now we've got to wait for <laughs> yeah. 700 yeah. pictures to copy. So. Yeah. <laughs> I was so fan of it. <laughs> I just can't stop. And so you would do this last. So you okay, need to do the ID. Okay. You need to do the ID of the whale first, and mm -hmm. then either we determine that we have a match or we don't. And then last, then you're going to fill in the sightings information of which whale it was. My name is Daniel, uh, I'm from Spain, and currently I'm working as a guide and as a captain on the whale watching boats. After working many years in, uh, in the whale watching, we also thought that we could do something else. These are actually the, the most uh, frequent things we find here in the beach. Pieces of fishing gear from the shotgun uh, and even clothes like gloves or fisherman lakes. A lot of part of also the fishing industry so far. I do it for myself. Maybe it's a little bit selfish because I'm the one using this place, but you can come here every day, anybody can come here and see this area with no trash and I think that's very healthy for ourselves just to see an area with no human footprint. I think is something that we look for when we go out. At some point you ask yourself, this is not my shit. You know, I didn't go fishing, but I definitely probably ate some fish that maybe come from this net but I definitely didn't throw this. But that's the thing, like if we all think like this, nothing is gonna change. I just do it because it, it's the right thing to do. Hola. Hola, ¿qué tal? ¿Qué pasa? Aquí estoy, en casita, acabo de llegar. ¿Estás currando por ahí o qué? 
Sí, estamos preparando Opal para la expedición y nos vamos ya en menos de 10 días. En... Sí, sí. Así que estamos ahí, pues eso, pintando, lijando todo el barco y preparando todo. ¿Qué tal los conejos? Mírale cómo salta. Está contento porque le he sacado, le tenía encerrado. Y ahora le he sacado. Y está súper contento. Boli, <risa> Boli, ven aquí. Boli, Boli, ven. Uy, está aquí hoy. ¿Ves? Sí. My mom is like. I don't know. It's, it's almost everything to me, I mean. And then, like, it's funny because when I was, like, a teenager, then then I was not really talking to, to my parents a lot about my life. But now I feel like since I move away from my house, then I feel like being closer to them, actually. So, like, since I left my house, then I've been more communicative and telling them more about my life and who I am. And the only thing is, like, it feels very good to feel to see the family and to be surrounded by them and that they take care of you and it, that's of course amazing but otherwise if it was not because of my family that place for me doesn't have anything really so it's, it means nothing to me really it's just yeah i don't know very empty place so ocean is home for me With Ocean Museums we have different activities or different projects. I think the main project is uh, the expeditions. So Ocean Museums sails uh, two times uh, per year. You basically come on Opal and, and we live on board for a week and then you are like with the Ocean Missions team and uh, the main aim is, is again to inspire people to take actions. And then this one is just RT one. Goes mm -hmm. over there. Nice for the library. Well, I think it's a, it's a nice new perspective on what we are doing, you know, the educational and uh, deeper approach to, to nature watching or exploring nature. During the expeditions we meet people from all over the world, many people from the Netherlands, many people from Germany, many people from Italy. They can see that if the four of us, if we have done this, they can do it in their home. They can do it in their, in their little towns. So it's not that difficult, it's just wanting That's, that's the, the, the only thing, that's the will of doing something great. It's uh, been uh, a big part of uh, my daily life now for, uh, for a few years now. And it's, uh, it's uh, getting quite known now. I mean, in the beginning it was, um, you know, Belen was the one pulling it off and, uh, and uh, had to explain the ideology to to even me in the beginning. I really didn't realize about how important this was until like people coming back to you and saying like, you know, Belen, thank you very much because thanks to you I have hope again, you know, thanks to you guys. And I'm like, wow, that's very, that's very powerful to me, you know, like that's like, that's worth it for every fucking work we have done, all the stress, all the, The travel, you know, everything, because when you really make that change on someone and touch someone's heart and then they change and they, they become more responsible with the environment and willing to do something, to act, for me that's the best 
ever, like that can happen uh, with ocean missions. Belen is kind of the driver behind ocean missions. It is like her baby, and she is definitely um, it's her passion driving driving the project. She cares so much about the ocean, and she thinks about that all day, every day, I really think. And that's kind of what connects us at Ocean Missions is all of us like feel that, but she is really, she will work 24 seven for her advocacy for the ocean and it is inspiring. <laughs> uh, hello, we watched a documentary yesterday of a rhino. Rhino? 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 Rhino. 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 Spaniard struggling with pronunciation 101. Rhino? Rhino. Spaniards and English, it's like, uh, you know, endless joy with uh, misunderstandings and uh, yeah. abuse of letters and uh, the alphabet in total. And, uh, <laughs> For me, the group of ocean missions is uh, the best team I could uh, have because I think uh, everybody's so different <laughs> and they are all very funny and they are like a family to me. And uh, but I think we are driven by the same passion and I think that's the most beautiful, you know, part of it. So that's the song of Usovic. Beautiful. It's I like it. It's such a beautiful song. It's so beautiful. We have in front of us the biggest mission that humanity has ever faced. The salvation of ourselves and our home. The future is in our hands and time is ticking. If everyone could just realize that they have the power to reverse things, what would they do? And I wonder many times, are we gonna fail? We must believe and feel responsible. We must have hope. We must get out now and create waves of change.